Are there cases in the in the Bible and scripturally people might quote where um, God was softened by prayer or action, you know, that someone took and maybe Austin, you might have some some examples biblically of this. But what, what do you think of this idea? You know, is, are there examples sure. where God can be uh, affected by human behaviors in a way that he changes what what the outcome of his actions is going to be? Yeah, I, I guess my, my more overarching, I guess, response to, to that question, to the previous mm -hmm. question, maybe this wrapped into it, is that I think, I mean, I do believe in intercessory prayer. I believe God listens to us, but I, I have a problem with an intercessory prayer that isn't also a, a prayer rooted in discipleship and rooted yep. in, I think, the questions of what's my actual practical response. So like if I, if I have the sense that a hurricane is coming, like, am, am I being called to repentance? And am I being called to, to love of neighbor and of enemy? Am I called to being more like Jesus? Or is this, like, and that's where, when I say that it looks like fortune telling to me, mm -hmm. I, it, it's, it's, that's what I'm not seeing is the yep. connection to actual, the, the ethics that I see mm -hmm. happening in the gospels and in the book of Acts and, and with the early church. Where like, I think the one, the one prophecy that I can think of where Jesus sort of gives this concrete this is something that's going to happen at some point is the destruction of the temple. Maybe I'm sure there's others, but that's the one that was coming to mind for me. And when I, I think when Jesus is predicting the destruction of the temple, it's not just this sort of mystical, th this is an arbit arbitrarily, this is a thing that's going to happen, but it's actually Jesus, yes, as prophet, but also as social critic, recognizing yes. that this is a corrupt system within the corrupt system of the Roman empire and, and being able to put the pieces together, even even like yes, he's he's God, but he's also I, I, in some ways I, what I see Jesus doing is sort of social commentary, social science, being able to say, look, this when or when he says that this is all going to fall apart, he's not, he's saying, look, this is the consequences of the actions that are being that have been going on and are continuing to go on. Mm. And so so when somebody gives one of these prophecies that's sort of a kind of a hard this is a thing that's going to happen. I guess I, I find myself wondering like, where is that rooting itself in? I think there's a biblical case to be made for being a social commentator or critic, being able to look at our society and saying, hey, the things that we're doing have, have consequences. And so I don't know, like, I guess I just have a, a, a more fundamental problem. It's even if somebody, even if, if somebody's predicting a hurricane, it's like my question is not necessarily are they going to be right or not? But it's like, so, so what? Not the, like, mm. or maybe not yeah. so what, what am I trying to say here? It's yeah, just what, like, like, what are you, like this what's, is, what are you leading to? What's going to happen? What are you doing because of that? Like I would say in general, it doesn't look like biblical prophecy. When right. like, going, going back to Jeremiah, it's like, he's predicting the downfall of the people, which happens, but he's also connecting that throughout the text to their inequality, the way that they treat the stranger, the way that they treat the orphan, the way that basically all of the marginalized of their societies get treated terribly. Right. And that's a big thing that God is connecting to. Basically, your society is completely corrupt and you're going to reap the consequences of that. And God's judgment in some ways looks more like God releasing them to the ends of their means. Yeah, and, that's a and, good way of putting it. Yeah. And so, and so I guess I, when I'm looking for a good prophet nowadays, I'm looking more for somebody who's able to actually do kind of combination of having the Holy Spirit working in their lives, but also being able to see society for what it is mm -hmm. and say, look, repent because your consequences have actions. So and that's the way that, that's the way that God often, I think, judges the nations is just letting them have what they want. And You're right. Yep. And and so if somebody's doing the, the predicting a hurricane thing. I don't know. I don't mm. unless they're rooting that in some sort of an actual. Yeah. What what is the what is the motivation behind God wanting to bring that message to, to the people at that time? <laughs> you know, is that I yeah. guess I guess what you're trying to say is, you know, if a hurricane's coming. Number one, why is a hurricane coming? Perhaps what is our response to this? What have has something caused this is uh, should we take action because of it? You know, I guess it's. It's very arbitrary, I guess, just to say this event will happen. It doesn't really say very much about God or his motivation when you say that, I guess, yeah. you know. And yep. whereas like another thing that I think I see missing in that word of prophecy that I see happening in, in like in Jeremiah. So he says, yes, you're going to fall to Babylon, but he also gives them instructions. And there's this, yep. like when I think of Jeremiah 29, it's this letter that he's writing to the people like 
everything bad that, that, that I said happened was going to happen. And mm -hmm. rather than the kind of, well, I told you so, he gives them this letter that says, hey, you're going to be in this place. I want you to love your neighbors. I want you to plant gardens. I want you to, 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 to have families. I want you to, to see your, both flourishing for yourselves and for your Babylonian neighbors who, you're, who conventionally, mm -hmm. they would, they're like, these are your enemies. These are the people that you're supposed mm -hmm. to hate. Jeremiah's word for them in that is lo love them. And, and so when I see somebody giving one of these words of prophecy, I'm, I, I don't see that happening. The, mm -hmm. the, the edifying, here's what it looks like for you to, to, to be repenting and working towards mm. flourishing. Instead, it's just sort of this clumsy hammer in an mm -hmm. argument. Mm. So when yeah. God brings these words to the people, then do you, would you say then that they say, say he, he say God says through Jeremiah that, here's a recipe for kind of avoiding <laughs> the downfall that's kind of coming your way. Is that then, do you think whenever God says that, that he almost semi knows what is going to pan out? Or do you think that they're almost in saying that he's given them a real sort of path to, you know, if you actually do this, you know, things will change or maybe it's a bit of both, but I guess, you know, this, this question is, does, can those actions be taken or is the prophet is the fact that the prophecy is being made in itself, you know, is that more, uh, more the warning of what's going to happen than actually the the you know it's hard, i guess it's hard to phrase but is the warning almost just as important as the um the instructions because god almost knows it's gonna pan out that way or could pan out that way yeah i mean you see biblical examples of both so like with, with josiah we see that he has this repentance and then that leads to kind of a postponing of, and at the same, right. when, when I, it seemed like the fall of Judah was inevitable, but I feel like that was more rooted in human nature than in uh, like, maybe, maybe that's God's plan. But at the same time, like, I, I do think that God, what, God, what we see throughout the text is that what God wants from them is to, to live righteously, both with God and also with, with other people. And to be sort of be these people who are living in right relationship with God and with each other. And so that's, I think, always the invitation. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I would say, I would say the invitation is always to repent. Uh, and, and I think that's the, the witness of, the value of the witness of the prophets is that invitation, I think, for us and our own lives and our own societies is that God does respond to that. Um, mm -hmm. But at the same time, like, I, I, I don't think I walk away from it with, with, a, with the magic formula necessarily. Instead, I walk away from it with that invitation to repent. And if I'm repenting just for me and it doesn't save my whole society, I want to live well anyway. And so I'm going to choose mm -hmm. that anyway. So, it's, so I'm not necessarily looking to it as the formula for, for escaping pain and, and, mm -hmm. and be, let... I, I, instead, of, I think it's the invitation into right relationship, which I'm going to have whether my life is good or bad. Mm. Yeah. And so, I, yeah, I don't like. I don't think I, I could probably find a few different examples throughout Old Testament prophecy that would say one or the other. Whether, like, in in one case, they they give they're given the message, they repent, and so God God turns away and protects them. And then you have the other cases where he does where where they don't repent, and. So I think the message for us is to to take that that invitation to repentance seriously either mm. way, mm. rather than sort of viewing it as like I think we're invited into relationship and not into a God who's just a formula that we have to fill out or a, a if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, John, do you want to add to that at all? Yeah, no, I, I I agree with you. I think that we you know I I never I don't think that God is ever surprised by us. I think that His you know, um, uh, Bart Ehrman once coined, he said, you know, it, what, what always puzzles him about uh, evangelicals is that they tell you that God is too vast and too large to understand. And then they proceed to explain God to you. Um, and, and so I don't think that God is ever surprised. I don't think he's taken off guard. I don't think he, I think when God issues a warning, it's out of compassion um, because, you know, it's like, here's your opportunity. Does God already know the hearts of the people that he's presenting it to? Absolutely. And, and I think of this when God was speaking to, to Moses about Pharaoh before he even went to Egypt. He goes, Pharaoh's not going to listen to you. 
He's like, he, he already knows. He's like, go and show all these incredible wonders. Go, go and send all these plagues. And all, before he ever mentions hardening Pharaoh's heart, God tells Moses, Pharaoh will not listen to you. And it's like, so for me, it's kind of like God's never like looking and going, oh, wow, I can't believe they actually prayed and repented. Or, oh, wow, I can't. I think he always knows. But I think that the heart of God is always that we come to repentance and do not perish. He doesn't, it's not his desire right. that we, we go down in a ball of flames. It's not, he, he doesn't sit back with glee and condemning Sodom and Gomorrah. It, it's mm. more like, look, you know, here's your opportunity. Here's your lifeline, grab a hold of it. And you never know, there might be, a, you know, as, as Austin was saying, if my repentance doesn't spare my society, um, you know, I still want to do it for me. I still want to live well. And, and I, I would say, you know, every once in a while, there's a Rahab. There's a Rahab in Jericho. You don't know. I mean, there might be a Rahab. In other words, maybe the whole society doesn't get spared, but because of that invitation, a couple of people within that society did get spared who yeah. wouldn't have got spared otherwise. And I think that that's the heart of God is always yeah. leaving the 99 for the one. He'll, he'll take the chance, you know, he'll go out there. And, um, but I, I definitely believe that, the even repentance is something that God really initiates to us. Uh, he initiates the, the, that moment of mm -hmm. where we see our sin in light of who is holiness. And the reaction is repentance. It's mm -hmm. Isaiah. It's woe is me. And I am undone and I'm unclean. It's, it, it, you know, it, it's I'm doomed, you know, and right. God <laughs> says, no, you're not, you know, and that's the, that's the beautiful part of the gospel is no, you're not, but I should be. I know. Let's look at what Jesus did. Here's why you're not. Mm. And it's like, it's such a wonderful, beautiful um, extension of his love and mercy and compassion. So I don't think, you know, and mercy triumphs over judgment. And I always think of that and think, you know, that means characteristically, God's mercy is larger and greater than his judgment in terms of which is more dominant in his character. He desires more mercy to extend it. He doesn't say my judgment is new every morning, but he does say that that mercy is new every morning. <laughs> so I, I, I just see that it's a huge part of who he is. And so yeah. yet God does bring judgment. But as Austin was alluding to earlier, there's a purpose. There's always a purpose. And that was something mm -hmm. I was doing on Testing the Prophets where I said, let's say this does happen. Why? What, what's the purpose? What, what are you trying to get at? What are you, right. what is God trying to tell us? And, um, and what is our response to that as believers? Hmm. Yeah, no, it's, it, it brings up all these questions, I guess, of, I mean, the first thing you think of, I guess, is how free is your will? Almost if God knows what you're going to do. And that's the question that people always, we, it's, it's very easy to get into that. But it, to me, you know, I, the way I think of it is that if God, was the one that created us literally created us in our personalities it's not he's not making a robot but you know even like your kids you would know pretty well kind of the way they're going to react to certain situations and god even more so than a parent would to their you know a human parent and their and their child you know so i see it as god you know and, and we you mentioned about sodom and gomorrah um previously and you know you even see this reasoning i guess where god said god concedes it you know if you can find these it was a 10 righteous men in this whole town, whatever I'll spare them. And I guess that's, there's always this thing of like, even, even if he kind of knows what's going to happen and can see the way things are ending up, he'll give this chance and this opportunity. And I guess that's the message of, of, of Christ really, that that's, you know, this, this opportunity is given, even though the path is narrow, you know, he, he gives this, this opportunity, this out. And you see it, I guess, so many times and, and with all the judges and all these parts of, of scripture, you see, I guess there's there is always this this way out this way to escape the wrath